Hi, my name is Alex from APC Dynamics. In this video, we'll go through the assembly process in Dynamics 365 Business Central. First, I'll talk about setting up an assembly bill of material for your items. Then I'll talk about an assemble to stock processing. Lastly, I'll go over the process when you are assembling the uh, finished goods at the time of shipping the order. Let's get to it. To set up an item as an assembly item, first we need to go to the item list. Bring up the item that needs to be assembled. To set up the assembly bomb for this item, I'm going to click on Related, Bill of Material, Assembly, Assembly Bomb. Here I need to define my components for this assembly. So I'm going to choose some items here. Choose my side panel. Quantity per would be the number of quantity to build one unit of this finished good. Then you go through and enter the additional items that's required for this finished good. When I'm done setting up the components that's required, I'm just going to close out. And this completes a process to set up an item with a subassembly. Next, I'm going to talk about the assemble to stock process. To assemble the items into inventory, first you need to go to the assembly orders. Click on new to create a new assembly order. Push enter to automatically generate a assembly order number. Type in the item that you want to build. Type in the quantities that you want to build. So in this case, I'm going to build 10. Make sure you scroll down and you identify the location that you want to build the finished good into. In this case, I'm going to choose main. Update the lines. From here, you can print the assembly order for the assembler to start assembling the product. When they're done, you can update the quantity to assemble. Meaning that if the assembly order has 10 quantities and they only built 8, you could change the quantity to assemble to 8. I'm just going to click on post. And yes. And that completes the process. On the lines area, you'll see the quantities that the assembler has consumed and what's the remaining. If you want to cancel the remaining assembly order, you could just go ahead and delete the orders. So just to recap, when you are entering an assembly order, the important fields are the item number, the quantity, and the location code that you're going to be building the products from. When you're done, make sure you note the quantity assemble and post to deduct the components from your warehouse and put the finished goods into your inventory. Next, I'm going to talk about the assemble to order process. If you have some items that are only made when the item is about to be shipped, you need to define that on the item. In order for the assembly order to be automatically created, there's a few setups they need to change. First is the replenishment system. You want to make sure that it is set to assemble. Next, the assemble policy. You want to change this to make the order. Having the replenishment system and the assembly policy be set to assemble assembly and assemble to order will allow the orders to automatically generate the assembly order. Once I have that set up, I'm going to go to the sales orders and create a new sales order for this item. On the lines area, I'm going to sell my panels. Location code, I'm going to leave it as blue and I'm going to ship five. So you see, as soon as I enter five, the quantity to assemble to order will automatically be filled with five. If I click on this three dots to drill down into this quantity, you'll see that it will automatically consume the required components. When you're ready, just post this order and ship an invoice. What this process will do is it'll ship the sales order and it will automatically post the assembly order and ship the finished product to the customer. Lastly, let's take a look at the transactions that was created from our assemble to stock process and the assemble to order process. 